Hey, everybody, welcome to the People and Purpose and Profits Business Coaching Podcast. My name is Brian Buck, and my co host is. And I'm Kat. And we are honored and excited today to welcome Tasia uh, to our show. Tasia, can you go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit about uh, who you are and what you do? And then we're going to dive right into uh, helping, helping bring out some of the, the great things that you've done for our audience. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much, Brian and Kat, for having me. So my name is Tasia Valenza, and I am an Emmy-winning voiceover artist. Uh, I call myself also a recovering actress and a fully functioning voiceover artist because <laughs> <laughs> you're slightly damaged when you've been an actor. Uh, <laughs> and I do feel grateful that I found voiceover uh, voiceover acting as a as a segue. So, but I'm um, I'm an Emmy-winning voiceover actor. I'm an Emmy nominated actress and I'm a confidence coach, speaker, TEDx speaker, and inspirationalist, I like to call myself. And I teach the art of confident verbal communication, utilizing the skills of an actor and a voiceover actor. So you, my clients, and uh, all those whom I teach can play your professional and personal roles more successfully with more impact and more meaning. Wow. Uh, I love that. And, you know, when we were talking before, you know, recognizing as a not only an, as a voiceover actor and actor and with all the work that you're doing, you are an entrepreneur. You know, you are representing yourself. You're needing to sell yourself in the marketplace. You need to know your value. And of course, on all the other work is, you know, how are you reaching out to uh, reaching out to what people need? And, and I got a chance to see your TED talk. And it was really amazing and highly, highly recommended that for people to check out. We'll, we'll make sure we leave a link on, with our show. Um, I usually start with one question, but I want to start with one that uh, you just made me think of. Mm -hmm. You hear uh, communication is 10% words, 10% voice, 70% body language. But watching your TED Talk, you make me think the voice is really bigger than the little 10% they give. So you want to maybe talk a little bit about that and share? Yes, I've heard those same stats that, you know, uh, over 90% is is <laughs> the um, nonverbal cues, right? Your body language, and they definitely inform it. But my belief is the remarkable power of tone and intention really takes words off the page and breathes and speaks life into them. Meaning that it's not the words we say, yes, they, they are a low percentage, but how we say them, with what intention. And so the easiest way to break that down uh, is to think of yourself as the actor, is that as an actor, we always have to think about our roles. We get the script, we get the information, and the actor deems and, and, and susses out these four questions. Who am I? Meaning the scene, right? Who am I speaking to? What's the relationship? What do I want? What is the success of the scene, but certainly for me to, to have? And then how does my voice and tone support that intention? And I love to use Poison Ivy because she's a, she's a very famous character without me, but I've gotten the chance to play her in, in the Arkham games and many other iterations. And she's a perfect one because she's so iconic, but she also was a very specific. So the who of Poison Ivy is she's an eco-terrorist, she's a shiro villainess, she's rather complicated, but she is the mother of all nature and hater of humans because they hurt her plants. So that's the who, right? So who is she speaking to? Uh, and also, by the way, she's a seductress. She really has that seductive quality, but it's not just because she's drawn beautifully, but because her venom lies in her lips. And so in order to get her prey close like Batman, she has to get him to come hither, like, hey, Batman, come here. So we have to think about, right, the seduction. Who is she speaking to? Batman, what does she want? She wants him to get close. How does she get him there? Through this power of seduction. And if she were to say, Batman, come over here, highly unlikely he's going to come closer because that's more of a repellent sound. So we really have to understand, you know, who are we in our, the scenes of our lives? I'm a mother and I'm a wife and I'm a friend and you're a businessman and a coach and you're a friend and a daughter. These are all roles we play 
sometimes we think of it as role. Well, in that role, we, we say it offhandedly, but we're always communicating. And either we feel successful in that communication, in that moment, in that scene, or we don't. And our voice and tone are met much of what is the common denominator of how did that scene go? Wow. wow. <laughs> Well, it's a lot. It's like a Right, right. <laughs> yeah. This is in the pod place on the show where we just pause and go, wow, <laughs> that's great. Um, but I think there's something to be said too is maybe forgetting trying to separate the physical from the voice because in your TED talk, and I just saw you doing this, you aren't just making good sounds your body your motions are matching the sound like they're really connected and i've done customer service where you say smile when you're on the phone because they can't see you but they can hear the smile and that's a real thing right yes it yes. really we, is the, the tone and intention is supported by the body language you can see i'm very big in my gesticulations and yes all of it goes together but it's just understanding that if i were to say to you right here Brian and Kat, it's a pleasure to be with you, and I'm so enthusiastic to be on your show today. <laughs> <sighs> you might yeah. not believe me. <laughs> the words say it, right? It's like yeah. the body language, leaning in, all of it, you know. And of course, um, with with being with the KVB, and I, I understand it. You know, Tony Robbins is all about body language. I mean, it's all about mm -hmm. changing our state through our body. So in the mm -hmm. TED Talk, I talk about the power pose, how we can hack our brains with raising our testosterone for two minutes. And then, you know, I, I made the acronym BEADS, breathe, empower, affirm, address. And then I added the S of smile. Because when we smile, we raise our own dopamine levels mm -hmm. and we actually, we, you know, create more warmth in ourselves. And the first nonverbal cue of a smile across the screen instantly says, I'm warm, I'm open, I'm available. Then the, then the tone that can match it, you know, you're, you're on all eight cylinders and you're already engaging and you appear more likable when you feel good. When you feel good, people hear it. And yeah. they've done studies that the words hello, hello versus hello, make you more <laughs> likable. So it's it, the power of tone and intention mixed with the ability of the body language to support, boom, you will rock your roles no matter what they are. And those nuances like that. that you had in the words. And, you know, I think just like Ryan watching the, the TED talk, it was just so fascinating. What got you into voice acting and how did you perfect it? Because I do think that this is just one of those talents that takes a lot of practice. And, you know, it's just like in business too, your devotion to it. And how did you become so great? Well, I'm only 25 plus years in. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> It was an overnight success. Uh, but no, I mean, it's like anything, you know, you, you do have to practice it, understanding the four questions. And then because I loved acting so much and I was, I was really good at it. I, I faced what most actors and I, I refer to the damage there, there's so much of acting that ends up being physically what they have in mind. Right. So I always had the talent. I, I was discovered at 15. I knew this was what I wanted to do. I loved it. But I was told so many times, even though I had great success, I was on All My Children by the time I was 16 and I was discovered by um, Louis Malle, a French director. I also had a tremendous amount of, you're not pretty enough, tall enough, smart enough, uh, you know, blonde enough, 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 enough. And so when, you know, I, I had such deep, deep um, self-doubt, even though I knew that I was wonderful, but you know, to be told it's not even your paper, it's not even your report, it's not even a product, it's you, right? That you're always being told that you're not enough, essentially, you're not worthy. Mm -hmm. And, and that was so painful. And so, uh, my mother who had been an actress at my age and my father, they both had done it and, and stopped doing it, but they really loved and encouraged me she saw the value of voice acting because she, she, she realized that I could take this out of the equation and she encouraged me. And I was like thinking, you know what, I'm already doing, it's hard enough as acting, voice acting is going to be that much harder, but she, you know, good old mom, she nagged me until I did it. <laughs> and then once I started doing voice acting and took this out of the equation, I was on cloud nine, I was booking job after job and there was no more variable. You're not enough. 
I could speak, I could take these words, I could breathe life into them. But then I was able to play this and that and all these roles that given what I look like, I wasn't. So it, it, I, I bring it into the idea that we're always being boxed by society. We're always being told what we're not enough of or what we should be or what we're allowed to do based on just the variables of, of the bodies we were born into or the cultures or whatever. And that when we can liberate ourselves to realize, no, this is the most beautiful, powerful instrument we can use. We can overcome any of those obstacles and use our voices to play the powerful, persuasive, charismatic, worthy roles that we want to rock. So I, I took that information, I left on-camera acting behind and said, this is what I'm devoting my life to. And as you can see, I'm slightly passionate about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's well, you know, yeah. And well, with the rise of video games too, it's not even cartoon, but it's, you know, there's, there's probably more money in video games now than there are in, in, in no movies are out, but they're releasing movie, video games, right? Yes. yes huge market yeah um one of the things i was thinking about when we're talking i reread uh, think and grow rich and the first time i read it something didn't stand out to me that it did this year but it's when you take your goals and you verbalize them i don't like i never realized the power of actually taking them from your journal or your post-its and saying them out loud. How, do you have experience with that or, or can you tie into what is different when you use your voice for those things? Yes, I'm a huge Napoleon Hill fan on top of it. And he's <laughs> like, you know, here I am a, an affirmationist. I love the af affirmations and I actually co-founded an affirmation meditation app. And I'd love to offer your listeners and viewers because it's completely free. But yes, he, he said it and claimed it. There's something to be said. I mean, writing down your goals is fantastic because it kind of takes the wish and concretizes it, right? And especially if you put in the I am and I have, the, mm. the, the quantum field, if you bring it to you now and not in the future. But to then claim it out loud with your own powerful voice, it takes it to that next level where you are in the frequency of saying, I deserve this and not the... The thoughts, because, you know, you can write something down and think it, and then, you know, you're trying to think it and visualize it. But we have so many negative thoughts, unfortunately, programmed in from our childhoods, many of us. And those thoughts are powerful and they're on loops, right? And unless we, we cut it off, which I think the voice can do the affirmation of like, oh, you know, I, I, I'm going to make $200,000 this year. No, you're not. I'm going to make... <laughs> I am going to make $200,000. I am making $200,000. I believe in myself. It's like, no, you become the witness. There's that negative thought, but no, I'm going to override it. I'm going to update my software, mm -hmm. which I like to think of the brain as a, as a, it's a, it's a computer. It and many of us are running on, you know, 30 year old programs and we need mm -hmm. to update the software. And that's to me what, what speaking aloud and claiming it and affirming over and over again does. It updates the software. And so I, I call it speaking the language of self-love when we're talking about ourselves, which is foreign to most people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it's very hard to learn, right? But we can it's learn true. it by what? Repeating. We're repeating it over and over again. Yeah, we, so. That's the habit, right? And we are multidimensional. So in just, you know, writing it and or just visualizing it, we are not addressing the very thing that we're doing every day, the best way that we're communicating, especially now that we're doing a lot of calls and, you know, we aren't really seeing each other. That that part of us this is still able to communicate and I just love how you just integrate the the passion and the emotion and all the other aspects that make us this just magnificent human being right yes and emotions are contagious and when we feel, right when right we feel good it's a tough time in the world right we're all struggling right now it's not like oh I wake up feeling amazing every day I have to program myself to feel I feel anxious every day when I get up I'm sure you guys do too there's a lot of uncertainty right now so it's like anything I force myself to say my affirmations out loud to to you know to program for success so that the old habits and the parts that are easy to default to don't take over so I I don't want to make it seem like it's 
the easiest thing to do, but I do, and I believe, and you guys know, you build habits by doing it. Right. And our self speak, if we can be our own confidence coach and our own compassionate companion, we can do that much better than when we, you know, deplete ourselves and say unkind things to ourselves and then try to, to go out there and like, you know, be our best. We're coming from an inauthentic place because we're, we're not feeling that we are valuable. We feel like we're imposters, right? A lot of us feel that. But when you can love yourself and authentically love yourself, and you can do it enough where it's awkward, like French, any language you don't know, I love mm. myself, I love myself, I love myself, I love my, I love myself. You know, it, 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 it will, <laughs> it that's will help. That's one. But it's like that. I'm sure you guys have patterns that you create and habits by doing it daily. Yes? Oh, yeah. So it's only uh, one that. thing. And the Give Great Voice component is one more to claim it, write it, claim it. Like you said, every facet that we can use, we all learn differently, right? I'm audio kinetic. I, I, I barely can take anything in like visually. I have to say it almost out loud. Cause so for me, obviously mm. voice matters, but we all learn differently. But what if we multiply it? You just vibrationally get that frequency that much higher than if yeah. you're only doing it one way. In your program, like something I found as a coach, when you talk about, when you think about who I am, who I'm speaking to, and what's my intention, a lot of work that I do with leaders is helping them actually be intentional because I don't think people are always conscious of their intentions. And just the power now of saying, I intend this or I want this really brings up do you help people with defining their intention as well because that is such a key you know it's one of the three main questions that's a great question yeah you know i kind of um think of myself as a life coach wrapped up as uh, as, a, as a vocal coach because i really you know I, I take all of my all of my the brian tracy all the the, the great mentors all that i have learned the 30 years of therapy <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, it all goes into how I coach. So yes, you know, when I, when I work with clients individually and I help them, um, you know, think about how they're up their confidence in their communication, a lot of that comes from, again, well, let's take, what is it your intention for this particular scene, but for this particular Zoom call? Do you want to inspire your audience? Are you, are you trying to motivate them? Are you trying to create that sense of authority? Do you just want to be warm and inviting? These are all intentions that you can land just for that particular Zoom. And then, you know, for the big picture, you think about the roles that you play. When we identify the roles that we play, a lot of those are aspirational roles. Maybe you're not quite there yet, but mm -hmm. even the ability to give permission to say it out loud that I want to be, or I, I intend to be a voiceover actor, uh, you know, mm -hmm. CEO, uh, whatever that, that particular is, that, that goal is, saying it, intentionalizing, and then starting to work towards that through these goal setting skills, including affirming it every day, making your vision board, writing your goals, you know, they're all steps towards it. So vocalizing it and intending it all go together and then recognizing, well, how would you, how would you play that role? What would yeah. you bring to that? And then we dive deeper if they have a speech, if they have um, you know, something that they're doing, we can, we can literally take those words off the page and work it, but it all goes together. I think they're, they're yeah. all integrated. And as coaches, we all have different ways to approach it. Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely, I like to not only help just with the voice, but with the, the life journey as well. One of my favorite. Go ahead. Uh, just the favorite Dean Graziosi thing is, you know, you sell them on what they want, you give them what they need. You know, and I think there's that piece in there is, you know, as business owners, you know, we're gonna give them the widget, the thing, the service, but we're also giving them what they need and that's what creates true satisfaction. And that's what really makes an impact. So. I agree with you. Right. And, and when we think of something, you know, um, honestly, I've noticed that with a lot of people, if they don't voice it, it's almost like in their mind, they can't believe it. But as soon as they say it out loud, something else happens. And it's just like you said, we have to have that intention. And then we have to embody that role. And that means speaking with conviction of like that goal. And then that's when the fears and the doubts and the worries and the, you know, all the limiting beliefs least are showing up so i think it's well, just perfect. 
saying them out loud takes away that power. So many of our limiting beliefs are so much bigger until we've said them. True, that too. A coach like yourself say, where did that come from? That's an old belief that's been, that was, that was put in there at three or four or five. And, and just having the recognition of like, yeah, maybe that's true. But having the reflection from someone like yourself really helps to give permission. We help give permission for people to be able to, to, to reach for their highest goals and get rid of those old thoughts and patterns and habits that maybe someone handed to them and they adopted as their own. Right. And that's mm -hmm. what, the opportunity to give great voice, which at its essence, by the way, means to move, touch, and impact using our voices. Mm -hmm. I love that. And two more Something, important to do that for yeah. ourselves, right? For ourselves. One thing that I'm thinking about, if you could speak to this, is, you know, it's very easy to say as a business coach that we're all about the business and the growth of the business and the teams. But one of the things that I love is supporting the leader as a whole person. And what I like is it isn't just the voice at work, but the voice as a parent, the voice as a son or daughter. You, can you maybe talk about kind of the, how, you, how what you do is holistic in life and not just in one area of yeah. life? because we are, again, we're multifaceted, magnificent beings. And we can be the most successful beings in our professional life. But if, we're, if our relationships are suffering, if we have bad communication, strained communication, um, we don't really feel fully successful. I mean, that's the thing is that, that my, you know, I mentioned in the TEDx talk, first I talked about my acting roles and then I talked about the hardest roles and the most fulfilling roles, which is wife and mother. Mm. And those are the, most fulfilling and the most challenging on a day-to-day -day level and the ones that I fail at the most because you know we we are the loved ones we kind of are the most reactive and so we don't always remember you know like it will we'll put on our roles and we'll rock them a little bit easier because we're not a triggered as much with professional life mm -hmm. but also we we know that we have to kind of put it together and then when we come home because they love us we can kind of fall apart or just be, you know, our reactive selves. But my kids are the first ones to keep me in line and accountable and say, that's not really giving great voice, is it, mom? <laughs> 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 when I snipe at them or nag at them, you know, like, yeah, you know, you're right. So the idea is that, hmm. you know, that we can remember. I, I like to joke that my husband knows exactly how I feel about him as soon as I've said his name. Can we all relate, hmm. right? As soon as you say the person, honey, Da, 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 da. doesn't matter what I said. Harvey doesn't matter what I said. You know, <laughs> honey, did you pick up the dry cleaning? Harvey, did you pick up the dry cleaning? Oh, reaction, <laughs> hackles. <laughs> no, yes, I did. <gasps> oh, thank you. You know, trying to make up for it, right? Because so we, 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 we have to remember that the tone that we set, and we talked about intention, we set the tone of the day with how we speak to ourselves and how we speak to the first people in our lives, our loved ones. And I know that when I am anxious or frightened or I'm, or I'm tense, I feel the room change. And inevitably mm. I hear my kids start reacting differently, whether I've just said one thing. And then I'm like, wow, I teach this. And I know I have to remember to do it because we, it's so easy to not realize how we affect those around us, but our emotions mm. are contagious. So to take a deep breath and think, how do I want this conversation to go? How do I want my husband to leave the house today when I ask him to pick up those socks for the 800th time? <laughs> right? I mean, you know, these are the, the conversations we can start thinking about, you know, how do, I, how do I give great listening and make someone who I love feel heard? Because that's another issue. Right. You give great voice if you're not giving great listening and that's attentive listening where we're really fully present and not at multitasking and not half on our phones. And we're in the society now where it's like almost okay to be, you know, half talking all the time or texting or, and, and using this digital communication. But I'd love to encourage people to remember that the voice overrides any emoji, any text. So that they continue to use their voices both for their professional life 
and for their loved ones to convey, to get on those Zoom calls or those FaceTimes and say, I miss you, or how are you feeling? It's mm -hmm. essential because at the end of our lives, we won't worry about the business stuff. It won't be the things that we remember. It'll be who did we love and who, how did we love? Absolutely. And one of the most beautiful quotes, I think it was by Maya Angelou, is, is, is said that you people at the end won't remember what you did for them, but they will remember how you made them feel. So I may have the person wrong, but it's just so powerful. Was it? Okay. Yeah. It's just so powerful. Yes. Yeah. Because that's, that's, that's a tone and intention right there. We can yeah, and storytelling and, you know, and, and something you said that I practice a lot with my clients is setting that outcome. And it's just so amazing the transformation that happens when you know what you want the outcome to be, because you start with a different intention and it changes the whole interaction. And, you know, one of the tips that I give is like you mentioned with the children is to think, okay, am I usually reactive with this person? How does it come across? Is like you said, you know, in, in my voice. And then what would I like it to be instead? And when you do that, when you speak with patience, when you speak with understanding, you're building them up with your voice. You're giving them confidence. You're creating a different narrative for them. So and I love it. And it's so huge. true because people... Again, you can say the same statement of, I really like how you did that. I really like how you did that. And the, re the receiving, how we take it in, the dopamine levels, you know, it says 70% of people that leave their jobs, it wasn't for the money. It was because they didn't feel recognized and valued. <laughs> that is so easy just with words of encouragement said with, the, the, you know, a kind and, and, and loving or compassionate or a motivating tone. And so... That's really, you know, the essence of give great voice. The gift of giving great voice is when, when we do it well, it moves the speaker, the receiver, and anyone who witnesses it. We all get that dopamine, oxytocin rush because as humans, we were born to connect. And our mm. voices are the instrument that God gave us to do that, right? That, the, that uh, you know, again, whatever you believe, this was this, this was the main instrument that we were supposed to use. So when we abdicate it to our phones and our emails, we have lost some of our humanity. And I, my, my mission, my mission and passion is to um, bring in voice back. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I love that. Well, thank you so much. This has been such a, a great, great uh, conversation and i know we could probably go on like for another 40 plus minutes uh but uh, we got to wrap up but how can people continue to hear your voice uh and hear what's next for you and connect with you and and find ways that uh, they could share their voice with you as well well i'm delighted to be able to share that i've actually today launched my uh, first 30 day give great voice challenge uh, program, which has just been, you know, years in the making in the last three months, especially. So that's something that, you know, I don't know when this is going to be released, but it's going to be open for a few more days and I'll be doing it every other month. So they can find me to do it that way at tejavalenza.com or givegreatvoice.com. And I'm also on all the platforms. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Instagram, Facebook. So they can definitely reach out to me that way. I, I love uh, working individually with clients. And I also love doing workshops. And, um, you know, my TED Talk in itself is a, just a, like a little mini workshop. So someone can take so much away from that. And also, I just wanted to share that I do have that free affirmation meditation app that you can start that self-love, that speaking a language uh, called Haven Guided Affirmations. So there's many ways to, to find me and to start giving great voice right away. So thank you so much for the opportunity uh, to share it with you and your wonderful audience. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah, you provided so much value. And we also want to give voice to our 
audience as well. So they could join us on our Facebook group and interact with Kat and I and interact together because these interv these are just the start of the conversations. Uh, and we want to be able to continue to do that. We also have a Facebook page. It just helps you know how to find the show, but you can follow us on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe or subscribe during your podcatcher of choice. So we look forward to seeing everybody at the next episode. Thank you, everybody. Take care.